Hello and welcome to dragons, unicorns, and other creative creatures. I am Dr. Kevin and I'm Rona Gofstein. Welcome. You know, we started this show and I, I made a very big point to go, I'm Kevin Ross Emery and Rona. And then what happened was I've got so much branding out there as Dr. Kevin that it wasn't crossing over. I know, it's okay. I looked at the first few episodes and I'm like, am I Rona Gostein? Am I my author named Rachel Kenley? You know, and, and that's, such a, that's such an issue with creatives. Some, it's not that we don't know who we are. We just are so many different things. Yep. Yep, because I also have, I have a couple of pen names that yeah. I write under as well. And it's, it's very interesting. That's why actually a, I, I teach a writer's workshop, I think I've told you this before, called Multiple Personality Disorder, a Writer's Workshop. That's what it is. Because you, especially when you're writing fiction, novels, things like that, you, yeah. you have to become each character you're writing. Oh, absolutely. It's part of the fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, my first, my first love was theater, and I wanted to be an actress, and I wanted a stage name, which I think is part of the reason I ended up picking a pen name. Um, but I also, I wanted to play all the characters. I didn't, I wanted to be the lead, and I wanted to be some of the secondary characters. And now I'm a writer, so I am. I get to be every character. Well, and it's interesting. I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, Emma Watson, uh, and I think it was Millie Brown, and I'm going to, I may screw up the second name, but... Emma Watson, who I love, um, just won the first gender-free MTV award. Hey, that's awesome. I knew they were on last night. I didn't see them. Yeah, you didn't see them? Are you, are you feeling okay? I don't do every award show. Oh, okay. I thought you just did every award show. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, the MTV awards. Just a the straight first, actor, not yep, male or female. Yep, just did a straight... Um, uh, thing and it was a non-gendered and it was uh, presented by a woman who plays a, uh, of the role of a uh, gender binary in a and is gender binary in her uh, in they how do you say her they you usually say they, they. Um, and, and and the, the their, person themselves tends to pick which which pronoun they prefer yeah so. Uh, in in on the in their role on a TV show, they play gender binary, but they're also gender binary in life. Oh, I got to check this out now. So yeah, and they presented the award, and I'm sorry, I don't, I, you know, I haven't had access to like normal TV for like 17 years now. <laughs> so. And we all go to YouTube and just watch what we want to watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I stopped watching. I, I stopped owning a TV like 15 or. 15 years ago or um, 17 years ago. Well, I have seen Millie Bobby Brown's show. She's awesome. So she, yeah, and, and she won one of the awards too. And so they were the Who's two the character first 11 yeah. in Stranger Things. Yeah, see, I had no idea. Clueless! <laughs> yeah, see, and I'm a bit of a pop culture addict, so. Yes, yes. One of her many addictions, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> one of, yes, yeah, so they're legal ones. They're legal ones, yes. They're all legal. So you, now what do you have for a cup today? Good morning, beautiful. Good morning, beautiful. There you yes, go. and with the, this metallic lipstick I'm wearing, as soon as I start drinking from it, it's going to be all over it. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It looks good, doesn't stay on. Well, since this is the first Dragons and Unicorns show that we taped since the Web of Light Expo, I'm where I'm, 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 I'm sporting my Web of Light Expo, my little wolf. I love the wolf. I think they're amazing. And the and the wolf healing center is up and going and I still haven't scheduled my first time I'm going to teach everything you need to know about life you can learn through a Broadway musical. Weekend. Well you know I'll be there for Harmony mm. and uh, I hope to do one for you on uh, Once Upon a Time with my the journal I have for using fairy tales to discover your own journey. So well I think that would be fabulous so we've got to get that scheduled so we can tell people when to do it. <gasps> busy um, busy creatives we never stop. Absolutely. I'd say we never sleep but that's not true I love my sleep uh, and my coffee. And, you know, we are bringing in a wide variety of artists, and we're going to introduce today's artist in just a moment. We're going to be, you know, we are trying to get people to understand that the arts, uh, being artistic and creative is not always what we think it is. No. Today's guest is a more traditional in the thought process of what we think of as an artist. Yes. Uh, but we are really reaching out to everything from artistic cooks and all sorts of different, uh, you know, uh, you name it, 
Um, if you are somebody who creates art, is a high creative, uh, and you'd like to be on Dragons and Unicorns, you can email us at you created the email. I did, and I didn't want that, to make you all write dragons and unicorns and other creative creatures. So, so it's D U and O C two. D U and O C two, which we'll make sure they have it at the bottom of the screen Absolutely. so you can read it because I can't remember it. <laughs> at gmail.com. At gmail. And if for some reason, whatever, for any reason, if you can't quite grab it or whatever, and you send it to uh, Dr. Kevin, D-R-K-E-V-I-N, at weboflight.com. I will get it. I'll forward it to the proper email so Absolutely. we can look at you it. Absolutely. You can find me all over Facebook. Um, I did leave a, a message for Positive Street Arts. They haven't got back to me yet. Oh, well, we'll in just Nashville keep our fingers crossed on that. I'm sure they will, that we're going to bring in again. We want to bring in some local artists and things. Absolutely. So today's find Yay. for artistic brilliance, uh, done with, a, with definitely a large brush stroke of humor uh, is somebody that I met at a show I was doing this weekend. Oh my gosh, that's great. I was doing a show in Keene and I'm sitting there and right caddy corner to me uh, is a booth and it's shared with a, was shared with a husband and wife team. He was doing massage and uh, chair massage and she was displaying her art. Hmm. And when I had a moment, I cycled by there and I was like, oh, I like that. That's fun. It makes me smile. I like, you know, I mean, I, I like art of all kind, but when something makes me kind of smile, there's almost an inherent little giggle in some yes, of her stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, and I really liked that. And she had these great, and I didn't bring her card. I have her card at home. I should have brought her card to show you because she actually has her artwork on one side of her card. They're about this big. Oh I my mean, gosh, they're, they're, like postcard size. They, yeah, I mean, they're like a, they could almost be a deck of cards type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, now you've just put another idea in her head. Oh, of course. So, um, so I'm going to be introducing now Alicia Cubbage, and that's C-U-B-B-A-G-E because it's aliciacubbage.com where you can find her. And again, that should, I know our fabulous crew here. Uh, we'll put that underneath her name. Um, and she has, are you ready for this? She started playing in the arts three years ago. I know, that was oh my, my gosh, look. that's that so unusual. Three years ago, she decided that, and I, and I can't wait to hear the story of how the artistic bug bit her and what kind of mark it left. Uh, she specializes in, I'm going to say watercolor, I, but I, she may do other things. We'll find out when we uh, actually throw the camera in her direction. Uh, and she did a, her first show was at, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not remember the name of the library. And I had it, I said it three times before I went on air and I went right and out now of it's me. gone. I, I know. I think it was Hammond Library? Hancock. No. Hancock. 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 Ugh. Hancock Library, so she's had a couple of showings. She sells some art. Um, and then when she's not being a wild and crazy creative person, tap dancing with her brushes in multiple colors and fun ways, mm -hmm. she she's is an accountant. That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. That's well, great, because that's, that's that stereotype we think about, too, that, you know, you know mild-mannered accountant by day. I have to say, the fact that you started this only three years ago, Alicia, and have already found the strength, bravery, wherewithal to display, sell, and share your art is amazing because as a writer, it took me forever mm -hmm. to do that. So good for you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's sort of, um, I've really just been following where it takes me. It started as a, um, I went to a workshop that was part of a retreat weekend. Someone was doing a watercolor painting workshop for chakras and mm. And I was really determined to do this workshop because I had done watercolor in high school as sort of a hobby. I just did it while we watched TV at night. And I nice. thought, you know, I really want to try that again because I really loved it. And, and then we sat in the class, and by the time we were done, I was, I was hooked. And I really went home, and I bought a starter kit and started just putting paint on water. And uh, it started out with just shapes. Um, so I didn't know how to draw at the time when I started, so it was literally just circles and lines with the paint on paper. And then eventually I decided I did want to know how to draw because I wanted to illustrate my own paintings and paint them in. And it was a real struggle at first. Um, and one day I just 
was sitting there and thought, how can I look at what I'm trying to draw differently? And, you know, because translating things from 3D into 2D on paper can be really difficult. And I was looking out my window at the trees in my backyard and I thought, well, it's just a bunch of straight lines, really. So if I just look for the lines mm. and I draw the lines exactly the way I see them, then it'll turn into what I want it to, the pictures. And that's how I learned how to draw and got better as I practiced from uh -huh. there. So yeah. very self-taught. Yes. You took that one workshop to kind of combine your creative and your spiritual, which we all know live in the same chakra. Right, and then awaken that muse. Yeah, muse. We do have actually a, a picture of a tree that, um, and you know, we were, I, I was gonna mention it. People may notice we have a different set and we have a beautiful new uh, dragon. Um, we love the, old, the other dragon, but yes. we felt like this was a better choice. And at the bottom of our dragon, um, if you wanna remove that right there carefully, is one of her trees outside of her I window. Probably not, but I'm gonna say that anyways because it sounded good. <laughs> yeah. No, this, yeah, this is, uh, this is called the Grand Oak Tree. Can I bring it up a little yeah. somehow? I don't know which direction thumb. it's right. going in. I love it. I think there's something, I keep thinking there must be something hidden in there other than the moon. And I keep looking. And that, you'll find in quite a few of my paintings that is true because that's what I like. <laughs> when I get done with a painting, I want it to make me giggle when I look at it. Because, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because I, I want to be happy and, and be smiling. And every time I walk into a room and see it, I want to have a smirk because of it. And uh, this one does not have anything hidden in it, just in case you're wondering. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what I see, which is okay. the beautiful thing about art is the artist may draw one thing and then a view, one viewer may see one thing and somebody else. I, I see a dance troupe. I see some very distinct figures that look like they're dancers. Mm -hmm. There's a dancer here that's blowing their horn. There's a dancer there that's doing a back bend. There's, I mean, like, I, I look at that and those things look like dancers to me that are some kind of dance troupe that are like, we're caught in a frozen moment of crisscrossing with each other. That's, um, that's awesome. I think that's a really good point too, because it, it's funny, it's a tree, which is a tree, very stationary. And yet there's something about movement. There's, there's, there's a great deal of movement in this picture. Yeah, there's definitely movement in that picture. And uh, that's, that's kind of the feeling that I, that I like about it, which makes me think of the dance troupe. Yeah. You know, you have the I guy guess. doing, if you look at this one right here, it looks like they're doing a headstand. They're in the middle of doing a headstand. They got their hand out, they got their head looking that way, and their feet are coming up over their head. <laughs> Cirque du watercolor. Right. Yeah, Cirque du watercolor. Yeah. There you go. Now, do you have a name for this? Yeah. It's called the Grand Oak Tree, and it's modeled after an actual oak tree in South Carolina called Angel Oak, which actually does look like this if you go there. Um, and I am in love with trees and so when I found a picture of this I was I was in love and I was I have to do that because because yeah just beautiful. It's, uh, it's it's amazing so probably you can set that carefully back on the floor so yeah. the two of you you notice how I set it up that I just get to comment and look at it and I get to hold it <laughs> he's so sneaky <laughs> And there you are, my dear. Ah, thank you. I've returned your coffee. Thank morning, you. beautiful. Look at this, all this. Good morning, beautiful. my lipstick. I've got to find stuff that does. I'm going to have to look for kiss-proof stuff in the future. Although it matches almost, sort of. Yeah, I was going to say, it has it adds to something. <laughs> um, so, love that. Now, you, now, where is this actual tree in South Carolina? It's on St. John's Island, I believe is what it's called. Uh, we actually went there um, to see it. And it's pretty amazing. So before or after ever, you painted it, after that's awesome. Yeah, and to uh, see it after. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. And when we got there, there was a, a guy sitting there doing uh, painting the tree, and his painting was pretty amazing too. And I that's what I love about art too is that everyone's perception is different. Mm -hmm. So what I see is one thing, but someone else looks at it and sees something else, and. I think that's what uh, allowed me to put my stuff out into the public because I thought, you know, even if it's not my favorite piece, how do I know that it's not going to be someone else's favorite right. piece? 
and why would I want to stop someone else from enjoying something um, just because I specifically don't like it? Um, <laughs> So, uh, how do we, you know, one of the things, because everybody's is different, um, what, how would you describe your artistic process? Does it pop in your head? Do you see something and go, I want to paint it? Do you doodle and does it sometimes just evolve out? Because we're going to be looking at some of your other art. This clearly was a tree, but some of the other art you're going to be sharing with us before the show is over clearly is something that also was internally inspirational. So. How, how would you describe your artistic process? Um, it's it's uh, spontaneous. Um, sometimes it's inspired by all of those things, either by I'm standing outside in my yard and I go and I see a flower, because uh, we have a lot of flower gardens in my yard. Um, and I think, wow, that would be really amazing if I took a picture of that close up and painted it. I could make that look really great. Um, sometimes I sit down in front of a blank piece of paper and something just comes to me. I start with a single image and I go from there. Um, I, have, I have a painting that I didn't bring with me, but you can see it on my website called Playful Pandas uh, by Moonlight, mm. which was inspired by my shower curtain. I love that. <laughs> see, yeah, this is, this is why the question, where do you get your ideas, makes artists go, what do you mean, where? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to the bathroom and get an idea. Right, exactly, about? yes. My shower curtain has bamboos all over it. And every morning I take a shower, I thought, you know, I could paint that. I could totally paint that. I love and it. then from there, the pandas were brought in. and it Well, that just... adds to the whimsical that you said you love. Yes, exactly. I mean, pandas are pretty whimsical. Yes, yeah. Now, one thing I would, I would, I would never describe as whimsical uh, and for very good reasons, would be accounting. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I, I've heard of creative accounting, haven't you? Um, only from the other side of the jail cell. Ah, well, that's true. <laughs> yes. yeah. um, so <laughs> do you find that this somehow brings a kind of balance in your life for that accounting side of you? I do, yes. I, I've struggled for probably about four years now with the idea that uh, not knowing whether or not I wanted to do accounting or do something creative full time. <clears throat> what I've found is that neither one is actually fulfilling full time. And so I'm working on this balance of being an accountant and doing that work because I have skills and in that and I enjoy it. But then also the creative process and expressing myself creatively is really important. And so so I do both now, and it really creates a very good balance for me, and yeah. Well, and I think that that's so important, and I think more and more people today are going there. Mm -hmm. They're getting there. They're moving. Slowly but surely. Yeah, of why do I have to have a single, like a single path or roadway? Absolutely. Yeah, one, one career, one job, one profession. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work for a lot of people. Even for people it seems to work for. Because I'm sure for years, you know, you said you only started doing this three years ago or so. I'm sure prior to that it seemed like accounting was working quite nicely for you. It did for, I, for yeah, for about the first 10 years I was doing it, it was fine. It, it was exactly where I thought I was supposed to be. And then it wasn't anymore. Um, I had uh, run in with cancer and had to do surgery and radiation and after that it really I really just started to look at how I was spending my time. I love the way you said that you had to run in with cancer yeah. like, like they ran into each other at the market basket <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually you know went, went your separate ways. Yes well <laughs> thank goodness. Right exactly and it's um it really changed my perspective in the way that I look at how I spend my time and what I do with my life and that was when I started to really think about and realize that just this one piece wasn't enough. It wasn't the only thing that I wanted to be doing. And I spent a good you know, four years trying to figure it out. I did um, health coach training and Reiki training um, and eventually found the artwork, which is a big piece that I do. and. Uh, 
And I'm also, aside from that, so there's, I have three different sides of myself that I'm working off of, the accounting, the artwork, and then also I do um, oracle card readings and, um, and yoga. So, See, we're never, artists, true artists are never just one thing, even if they start as accountants. Right. <laughs> we aren't. It was always there. All those facets were just sort of waiting to be uncovered and polished up and shined. That's great that you have that third piece. They say, you know, the, the three legs are stronger than two anyway, so the triangle's very strong. Well, one of the things about, um, I truly believe that art uh, pushes one into being more multidimensional, more dimensionality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the reason I say that is, you know, they, they talk about, and I wished our public schools would listen but we won't get into a public school conversation because that never goes well for me on air. <laughs> um, or it goes fine for me, but uh, <laughs> sometimes Not I have well to the steal my soap op soapbox. Uh, but, you know, we have tons of research. We know the more variety of subjects a child is introduced to, mm -hmm. the better they think, the better thinking skills they have, mm -hmm. the better critical thinking skills they have, the process, and if you were to put it all out equally and say we're going to spend this many hours doing art and this many hours doing math and this many hours doing science, yeah. and they were all the same amount of hours during the week, you would end up with a child that's brighter at the end than this huge, like, oh, well, these are the practical skill sets, and we're going right. to, you know, and art and music will, you know, kiss off for a half an hour a week. <laughs> You know, well, yeah, the verbal linguistic and, and the arithmetic skills are the ones that are still more valued as far as public school is concerned. And yet so many people don't really learn that way. They learn kinesthetically, they learn visually, they learn auditorially. So when you bring in these other things, you do, you bring in all these other sides. And, you know, so you don't become just numbers and ledgers and stuff like that. There's so much more. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's great that now you feel balanced. Or more yes. balanced. Are you balanced yet? I do feel balanced now. Crazy and out of whack with the rest of us. So. <laughs> I feel more balanced at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, once, I, once I decided that it was okay to be an accountant as well as be an artist, mm -hmm. then, I was a, then, then I felt more balanced. Well, you know, so. as, as we said, you just, you, Superman was a you know, newspaper reporter. Everybody has their by day, you know, secret identities. Yes. Hmm. Cover identities. Well, and it's, it's interesting because um, I'm going to actually challenge that just a little bit. I'm so um, surprised. I'm so, so surprised, yeah. Just because I don't think that that's, I don't, I don't have a day identity. I haven't had a day identity in 27 years. I've been the same nutcase morning, noon, and night. <laughs> um, you are very fortunate. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's the thing is, I, part of what I want to give this, part of the reason why I wanted to start this show was give permission to the accountant that maybe is doing cross-stitch and creating their own pattern on the side or is whittling and creating animal figures that, no, that, that, that can be a viable part of, you know, I didn't think of it in, in quote-unquote accounting terms per se, but just that... I want, to, I want this show to give people permission to fully explore all of them and say, it's the 21st century. Yes. We no longer, I mean, for 50 years, since the 50s, so for, it's over 50 years now, now it's 60 years, yep. 67 years, but since the end of World War II, there has been a huge push in this country for everyone to become homogenized, pasteurized, and a product that's identical on the shelf to everybody else. Yeah. That's been the push. Mm. And, you know, so when you go into the holistic arts, when you go into the visual arts, you know, w in, unless you end up with a, you know, show on, you know, a major network or something, you're kind of a struggling artist, somebody who <laughs> couldn't get a real job or find their way. And we need to communicate that real people with all sorts of skill sets oh, are yeah. also artists. That's right. Yeah. 
And it spills over into all other parts. You know, the, the artistic side is not just when I'm painting. It's in everything mm. that I do. It also comes through in my work. Um, you know, the, my ability to, um, you know, problem solve and think about things in a different way to get to a solution that other people may not be able to come to. That's, that comes from the artwork um, and the, you know, the ability to, to really see what's not there and then bring it into existence. I and like that. See what's not there and bring it into existence. That's a great line. Where, um, how has allowing your creative, and I'm going to say your creative and intuitive because you kind of, the story unfolded both seemed like it was simultaneously. Yes. After you, you know, um, backslapped cancer. Yeah, 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 not welcome here. Boom. Get away. Right? Boom. Uh, <laughs> Boom. Um, somebody's going to complain that I'm advocating violence. Against Good cancer? for you. Get a life. Um, anyway. <laughs> It's reasonable to me, but um, how did it change your relationships? Did it change your relationships? And if so, how did it change your relationships? Um, well, it it did. It changed my relationships with people at work. Um, you know, there's less conformity in in certain places that's not um, well received. <laughs> and so I, you know, I had some issues with coworkers in some places I've worked because the way that I work in my accounting position um, is different. The way that allows me to work well and, you know, and think critically and also and solve problems is not the same as the way other people work in that environment. Um, and it has, it's changed my relationships in my personal life. Um, I'm definitely less people pleasing, I would say, you know. It's That's interesting. More, I like that. More independent and uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trusting your own voice, your own yes. vision, your own way of of being and doing things and living in the world. Exactly. Accepting myself exactly as I am right now and not feeling a desire to change based on what other people's needs are. And that goes back to what you were just saying about the public schools. You know, yes, they'd learn and yes, they'd see all these different ways of learning and all these different things and, and ways to be. But to, to be more confident in who and how we are with ourselves and therefore with other people. And what an example then you're setting I mean, yes, I can see where people around you will be like, oh, she's not following the mold anymore. I don't know what to do about that. But as you said it, and, and, and I highly recommend watch the show later, you kind of got all glowy <laughs> when you started to talk about that. You're totally like, this is how, how I am now. And you know what? The world's better for it. And it's true. <laughs> It is better for it. If nothing else, your world is better for it, and the rest of the world just needs well, to Well, that's, you know, the ripple adjust. effect. Right. Yeah, the ripple effects happen. They, they can't not when one person dances differently. Yes. Did you yeah. find that there were friendships that moved away and other friendships that came closer when you went through this? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, there are people that... I'm not friends with anymore, not because we had a falling out. It's just sort of a natural, we just sort of stopped talking mm -hmm. and, you know, spending time with each other. And then other people that have come into the fold who are amazing people that I'm really grateful to have as friends now. And that was also a natural progression. They just sort of, you know, were attracted. I attracted yeah, them to myself. Absolutely. Um, and and it, has been, it has been really great. Now, at what part in this story did your husband come in? Was he there before the cancer? Did he come in after? Was he? Well, we was met. Was he your oncologist? <laughs> well, we met when we were 13. Oh, in, okay, I'm the romance writer. Yes, I get to do that. Oh. <laughs> in homeroom. Um, we were just, we've been, we were friends, really good friends, all the way up until, let's say, I was probably about a month before I was diagnosed that we decided we would start dating. Um, and then, then I was diagnosed and started going through that process and 
in the middle of all that, we moved in together. And then about a year or two later, we got married. And so he's been, you know, with me full time <laughs> since before, right before the diagnosis, actually. But through the transition, yes. which is great. Yes. To know he, that he's yes. open and ready for all the different ways you're going to. Exactly. Now, did your transition um, open him up in any way or support him to be more creative or spiritual, or did he already arrive that way? Um. <laughs> How did the milkman deliver him? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was... And for those who don't know what a milkman is, you can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> he was, um, well, he was who he's always been which is amazing and, um, you know, just a really naturally caring and open and honest person. And so he's really easy to get to know and like, um, and he's very supportive. So, you know, I think he, he remained who he is, but also opened up through the course of our marriage. Um, at one point he remembered that he wanted to do massage therapy and things just aligned so that it worked out that for a year he could stop working and do school full time and become certified. I love that just aligned. It, it was it, it was really uncanny how everything fell mm -hmm. into place for this to happen, and it did. And he's been practicing for three years now, and it's it's awesome and for him and and for us as well. And uh, so you know I'm not sure if my transition affected that for him. If him watching what I went through gave, you know helped him to feel secure and confident in himself to be able to do it, or if it's just our relationship has it has always been supportive of each other and the alignment of things. Um, I feel like I know that our relationship has changed over the last six years we've been married, maybe seven years we've been married and uh but i couldn't really say specifically how other than we are closer and we know each other better than we ever have even though we've known each other for Forever. over 20 years <laughs> so i love it it seemed very i don't know if organic is the right word but just yeah. sort of yeah it's yeah. organic well you know and oftentimes you know you you have polar opposite reactions you're dating somebody, oh, yes. you're involved <coughs> with somebody, you're moving to the next step. Then when something, you know, life altering, like a run in with cancer, um, a, a spiritual awakening, a creative yeah. awakening, sometimes it gives the other person more permission to say, look, you know, we're on the roller coaster. Let's throw one more car on the train. What the hell? Strap <laughs> yourself in, honey. Here we go. Yeah. Or sometimes it goes into the other of, <gasps> and goes just the opposite way. Right. So pick another piece of art. Let's look at it and. Uh, sure. Oh, she's gonna pick one of my favorites. Oh, good. I saw that one, and all I could think of was, you know, writing prompt, writing prompt, book cover, book cover. Oh. Where is the fairy she's looking for, or he's looking for? Because it's really gender non-specific, which is also wonderful. Yeah, this one is called "You Can Find Me in the Garden." Oh. And. I love it. It's really. Um, it's really about how I think that you should be when you're in the garden. Not walking through it and sort of looking at things from afar, but actually getting down with your face in the flowers, mm. looking for what's there, which could be, you know, bumblebees or crickets or, you know, whatever lives in the flowers. Because um, that's how I like to look at flowers and plants, is to really get my face in there and look at everything and see the tiny little you know, micro world that's living in there. It that, really is. Like if yeah. you like unfocus your eyes, you start to see things are moving all the time. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, and and I look at this, and all I could think of was was the idea of the Lilliputians. Oh yes, Little who Jonathan are the same Swift. size as the flowers, and they're yes. walking through them, because with the perspective there, the flowers, you know, and I can see that they're obviously closer to us, but. The flowers look like the proportional of that. This could be a this could be one of the wee folk walking through the garden, mm -hmm. yes. almost. Yes. So there's yep. a uh, there's a them. definitely a wee folk. Um, I know that this. Are you getting a good picture of this? Should we angle it a little bit more? Because 
I noticed we've got some lights going on, but yes, we're glass. reflecting and yeah, refracting stuff like and, that. Oh, I do love it. That. And I love the green eyes because they're just so different. Yeah, yeah. And it, ref it just connects with all the greenery around them. Good. Well, I think it's interesting because she had it, and I'm sure at one shot they were singing this, which looks like it could have been one of the flowers. <gasps> oh, yeah. Flower. Yeah, because you do have a tulip there. Yes. yes there's you tulip tulips there. and lilies. Okay. Yep. Few, it's two of the few flowers I can actually identify. So but till it, seriously, that is like, you know, children's book cover yeah. imagery to me. Yeah. I, again, I don't, I cannot, I am creative, but I am not artistic in this way. I cannot draw. So when I see it, I, I, always, I end up like, because what can I write about it? <laughs> and that's her business card that I chose. So I'm going to have you put that one down. You can either put it back on the table or beside you, whichever one uh, works better for you. Um, there we go. And um, show us another one. I mean, we're not going to have a whole lot more, Excuse me. more time, so I want sure. you to tell the story behind a few of the other pictures. Okay, we'll, we'll go with this one then. This is another flower. Um, this one is called Backyard Rose, and that's because it's a rose that's in my backyard. Um, blooms once a year, basically. It's a single rose. It's not a bush. It just the only, it shoots oh up gosh. by itself, and it blooms, and it's gorgeous. Um, is it really like red tipped on the yellow? Yes. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. It's and amazing. Yeah. So this past summer, I took a picture of it and, with my camera and thought, yep, that that will be a fantastic painting. So, yeah. So that. Yeah. Uh, I love it. It's distinct and not distinct. Like the the, the petals kind of flow into each other and and. Uh, yeah, and that little petal looks like a seahorse trying to leave yeah. the fold to me. <laughs> and I'm thinking of it, and now that I'm thinking of it, sort of the, 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 that lone flower, just, you know, just this big burst of beauty all on its own. Yeah, I think of things as she's telling the story, like, you know, unique, one of a kind, individual, mm -hmm. stuff like this. So if you put that one down beside you, you may have an easier time grabbing another one. Okay. I know we've kind of got it set up in a way. Um, but I would like to, yeah, because I could just feel you really wanted to show that one, but it was not an easy one to get to. Yes. Yeah, so this one okay, is... Okay, now how do you know you're setting that one right side up? <laughs> um, because I'm the one who made it. Oh, look, see? So, and there we go, artist progress. My husband and I sometimes have discussions where he thinks that something is not the right side up, though something that I have framed, and I say, no, this is the way that it's supposed to be. Because I... Yeah, and he's like, well, I think I would hang it the other way. And I'm like, well... If you want to purchase it, you can hang it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, the accountant is not very far away. Not far away, very good. So Always know. remembering the bottom line. It's an important thing. Yes. It is beautiful, though. This one is called uh, Remember Who You Are. And it's very much uh, from about the spiritual side of us all and about, you know, how part of our mission when we're here is to remember who we really are and where we actually come from as opposed to just being human bodies. Now I'm going to see if I can grab that from you. That's not sure. too heavy. So, so you could look at it this way. Mm -hmm. See, part of me that likes it this way. Ah, yes. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I was like, I kind of like it. I'm trying to decide if I like it uh, you know, and of course, obviously, she's going to... Well, they say that way, too. Yeah. You need a rotating room. Rotating wall. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking at it, and I'm going, you know, I, I, I like this energy here, which almost seems like it's a cosmic dawning of a new day. Oh, yeah. And so, and, and this is the nightfall, and this is so, you know, again, everybody has a different... Now, of course, what happens is... She kind of sort of makes sure that she imposes as much of her will as she can <laughs> that you're going to hang well, it the way I, she painted if it. If you're buying it framed, then she gets to impose the will. Um, of course, I would have no problem changing <laughs> this over here. And you could, yes. Uh, you could. Or putting that. it on an easel and then changing it on a regular basis. Because I could do that. Too. I could see doing right. that, too. I could see having it this way one day and then going, nope, today is a this way day. But yes. I love how this hand, I didn't notice it at first until you picked it up, that this finger, this thumb, is visible through that part there. I hadn't noticed that at first. And I like the way that the hand chakras are both radiating energy that is clear. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah, that was, that one started out with, uh, 
I don't really remember why I wanted to do it, but I painted my hands and then stuck them on the wet paper and went from there. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly hands, it's distinct, you can see all of that, and yet it starts to do that wonderful thing that watercolors do, which is spread and move and... Yeah, I haven't painted in watercolors in ages. I have, a whole, I have sets and sets of watercolors, and I just haven't done anything with them. Oh. Time. I love this. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. So I think we'll probably, we, we may have time enough for, we might have time enough for the last two pieces. Let's right. see, because I know you brought two more pieces with yes. you. Yes, yep. So, so uh, this one is called Galaxy Flower. It was inspired by uh, a picture I took at the Botanical Gardens in Montreal. Mm -hmm. okay. um, they have a flower that looks like this, or more than one in the, I can't remember which part of it it was in, um, but it's in there. And, uh, and I saw, well, I really see in nature the entire universe and everything. So that's mm -hmm. what this picture is representing, is, you know, that the galaxy and the universe is in every flower and everything. I love the really. pinks and the purples. And that Interesting choice of framing, because a lot of people would have framed that and done the black and then picked a frame color that had some color that was in it that would pop one thing out in this way the frame doesn't choose which color you you look at you look at yeah it's just it actually it makes you kind of do that it into the center where the the, the black line is yep because i would look at it i'm like black on black that's interesting and of course you've got texture um which helps as well i mean texture makes its own statement how how much time and effort do you put into do you frame the do you mat these yourself or most of them i do yeah this large one i didn't i had uh creative encounters and keen do it for me that's um, as well as job. another one that i have that's bigger than this one they did for me um but the smaller ones that i can actually do myself i do them all myself and it's a good amount of effort and time you have you know. it is and it's a lot of it's choice again i mean you could i mean here we have two flowers Obviously, I mean, very different ideas and extremely different mats and frames. And they would look completely different if you switch that. It's true. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, for me, it's the harder part of the creative process is taking these paintings to the store, buying matting for them because I buy them in these giant sheets, mm. and then trying to figure out what frame is going to work with the matting and the painting. You know, you have to sort of visualize it because right. you don't know until you actually put it together. And sometimes I put it together and it's terrible. And it's I have like putting on the wrong outfit. Yeah, and I have to <laughs> go, oh. this is so not right. Yeah, this is not the right frame. It was I'm right in my to... head. <laughs> what? Good, it was good concept, good. terrible. So you've got, you've got one more quick one? Yep. Because then mm -hmm. I got a closing question for you and then okay. we're gonna be out of time. All right. This oh. one is called the Kundalini Yogi. Ah. And it is inspired by my practice of Kundalini Yoga. Um, and this is, it was just, uh, you know, sitting down. And it was one of those things where I thought, oh, I'm just going to paint someone meditating because that'll be fun. And, and was uh, it fun? It was fun, yeah, yes. Yeah, I really like the colors. Uh, green is my favorite color, so. It's beautiful. Um, it almost looks like angel wings behind him. Ah, the yes. The they go up. Mm. Yep. Almost like there's an, an angel, angelic energy in the stars of the head and the green and the blues of the wings. Yeah. You know, the more creative the person is that's looking at it, the more they're going to see in it. Oh, yes. yes. And I always like to hear what other people see in my paintings. So, so you can find out more about Alicia Cubbage at aliciacubbage.com. I'm sure mm -hmm. that's going to be in the bottom of our screen. Do you have any upcoming out shows going on? Um, not right now, I don't. No, okay. I have nothing, nothing scheduled. Do you think you would ever want to try to teach this, or is this just for you? I have thought about teaching it, and I, I think I would. Um, the way I would teach a class, though, would be very free form. Because um, I think, I believe that everyone needs to find their own technique, and, and teaching someone how to do a specific technique sort of takes away their own creative expression and figure you know like 
everyone has their own technique. Draw a red flower with a green stem and green leaves. Right. Yeah. You know, or draw it specifically in this form. I like that. So. That's, yeah. I could possibly even do a class like that because I've never been successful in an art class. Well, I might be. So we have to wrap up. Our time is over. Uh, I want to thank uh, Elisa Covage uh, for coming. Uh, and uh, as always, oh, my uh, dragon and unicorn companion, Rona <laughs> Goffstein. Um, and we'll talk. You should come to the Wolf Healing Center and maybe teach a class there. Okay. Yeah, that, that would sounds be great because it's a crossover between spiritual and artistic. Perfect. So. The only excuse you have for not exploring your artist side is you're a coward. Namaste. <laughs>